So how do we compute for standard deviation, especially for individual stocks, by looking at a specific set of returns? This is exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to make sense of what X post versus X ant is, and we're going to be solving this question, which is super relevant, and that's probably going to be on your exam. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have this question, by the way, if you need these questions, they're definitely on my website, eastmahelps.com, in which you have about 90 questions that cover portfolio theory, CAPM, market return, market efficiency, as well as options. So in this question, we're looking at this idea of computing the standard deviation of returns. And how do we do this? Okay, what is being asked from us? And then kind of just how do we break down the question? So here we're discussing, we say that we have observed the following annual returns for ABC Inc. Uh, we have 25%, 15%, minus 20%, 30%, 15%. So the first thing that I want you guys to be able to identify here is that we're discussing this concept of observing returns, okay? First thing first, when we observe returns, it's typically because we have looked at past data. You know, we don't observe the future. We only observe the past. Therefore, it's very quickly, very, very obvious, very quickly that we're dealing with historical data. And one thing, when we're dealing with historical data, and if you have seen my notes, you definitely know that historical da data is equal to ex post, all right? So we're looking at ex post returns. So if we're looking at historical data, if we're telling you in the question that you've observed stuff, therefore you need to know that you're dealing with ex post returns, okay? And why is this relevant? It's relevant because you're gonna be using a different formula. And the formula that you're gonna be using is actually just as follows. And once again, this formula is available on my website, so you could definitely use it to your advantage. So ex post is equal to the following, and I'll write it on the screen minus one, then we have r minus the mean to power two. So that's your formula, okay? So that's how you find the standard deviation of your ex post data set. So now that we know that, now that it's obvious that we're dealing with historical data, it's obvious that we're dealing with ex post returns, what we need to do now is just two steps. The first step is because we know we're calculating the standard deviation, and when we're looking at our formula, we see that we need to find the mean. Now, this question does not provide to us the mean. They only give us the following annual returns. So the first thing to do is to figure out, well, what is the mean, okay, with this set of data? And that's pretty straightforward. So let's calculate that. That's the first thing we want to be able to do. So the mean of our observed returns Wow, I wrote that terribly. <laughs> mean of returns. So the mean of our returns is calculated very, very straightforwardly. Essentially, you're gonna take all of your returns, you're gonna add them up together, you're gonna to divide them by the total size of our, of our sample or of our population, whatever you wanna call it, and you're gonna be able to find your mean. So just like that, we're gonna add up 25%, 15%, minus 20, 30, and minus 15. That's gonna give us the following. So 25 plus 15 plus 20, uh, plus minus 20, sorry. So minus 20 plus 30 minus 15 over five. And that's gonna give us 7%. So that's amazing news because now we know exactly what our mean is. We have our mean. So now all that we have to do is once again, look at our formula for ex post. Let me write it one more time to make it super clear. So once again, we're dealing with ex post returns. And that's obvious because we're looking at historical data. So all that we have to do now is default. We need to be able to find our variance. It's pretty straightforward. So what we're gonna do is, and you know, I definitely know that this is exhaustive. It's not the most fun thing ever, but you know, you, you kind of have to do it. So. We have our first return. So we have 0 0.25, so 25%, minus our mean to the power of two. And then we're gonna just rinse and repeat. So now we're gonna do 0 0.15 minus 0 0.07. So that being 7% to the power of two. Then we're just gonna extend 
all the way. So now we're going to do plus minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.07 to the power of 2 plus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.07 power of 2. And then the last, but definitely not least, or, you know, maybe least because I definitely know that these are exhaustive steps, but, you know, you have to be able to do them on an exam. So minus 0 0.15, so that's minus 15%, minus or mean. You really want to make sure that you're not minusing the plus signs in between, you know, the set of returns. You just want to be able to remember that because we're squaring every difference, because we're squaring um, a specific stock return minus the mean, we're going to square that result. You don't need to really consider, you know, any changes of signs. Just make sure to place all your values as is, and then you're going to be able to get the values you need. Um, one little thing I want you guys to be able to remember is when we're doing ex post returns, okay, you need to remember that at the denominator, we have n minus 1, okay? So in this case, if we count these things together, we have one return, so two returns, three returns, four returns, and then a fifth return. Therefore, it's very obvious to us that our denominator must be 5 minus 1, because that's exactly what the formula tells us, all right? So 5 minus 1, and then that will give us the following. I'm definitely going to skip a few steps. So that's going to give us 0 0.5325, if I'm not mistaken. Now, what I need you guys to be able to remember is that our ex post, okay, our ex post formula, as you can notice here, said so this is squared. Therefore, our ex post formula actually gives us the variance, okay? It gives us our variance. So what you need to be able to remember to do is you want to remember that you need to square your value at the end to find your actual standard deviation of returns, okay? In this question, they did not ask you about your variance. They asked you for the standard deviation of returns. Therefore, in this scenario, you have to make sure to find your answer and square it, such that you get the following answer, 23% and 0.76. So that's how you find the standard deviation of returns, okay? Now, this was a very simple question, but I wanted you guys to be able to identify the nuances that you need to apply between ex post returns and ex ant returns. In this question, it was very straightforward. We were told you've observed data. And because you've observed data, you have to be able to identify that we're dealing with ex post returns. And then you just gotta use the formula. Remember to do n minus one for your denominator, and then just remember to square root your data at the end to find a proper standard deviation of returns. I hope this helped. And uh, you can definitely look at much more data, much more questions, much more problems and content on my website called ismahelps.com slash com308 or slash intro to finance, depending on where you're from. And I'd be more than happy to help you out.